a little bit of awkward lag between me here in Start Streaming, which I'm clicking right now, and the point in time where we go live. So with that said, it tells me that I'm live. It is, ish, it still says we're starting. Right, so all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna assume that we are live. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I'm Matt and welcome uh, to this unboxing of unnamed foam. Uh, which we will be doing in just a few moments time now those of you which are uh, on the live version if you can let us know if the audio is good or bad as the case may be mine is telling me uh, that it's lost the internet which is always a great start uh, it's one of these awkward little situations do I go back over there and check if it's working I'll tell you what while I'm going over there to check it out we're gonna do a little bit of housekeeping uh, so number one, this is being recorded live, so as such we leave all mistakes in. Uh, live and loud, thank you Lauren, appreciate that, my laptop's uh, decided not to work. So uh, yeah, this is live, so all mistakes are being left in, that's why I've just had to nip across to my desktop just to make sure uh, everything was working, and here on the laptop, it's trying to work. <laughs> so I can see your chat, okay? Uh, now, a big point which I want to stress, both of these models are bought out of my own money for my own abuse, uh, abuses. Uh, the pair of them cost under 100 quid, which is absolutely happy days. I know that many of you heard me mention this many times before, uh, and I'm very um, chuffed to be able to say this. This is a time where it's an RC modeler's choice, and uh, these two models are, one's built to a specification, and the other one's pretty cool, and my chat has been in comeback, happy days. Uh, and we are in a very lucky time, so uh, do keep in the back of your mind that these models are bought out my money, and we always hold our final judgment until we've got a model out and got it in the sky. Uh, there's a bit of a topic going on in the Facebook group at the moment about this, uh, is that I do push my models hard, uh, as such I do uncover things from time to time, uh, but, but both of these I've seen flying, uh, so I know they're good. Okay, so uh, I'm quite confident first, like, give a thumbs up on these from the very beginning. Uh, and, uh, yeah, with that said, we'll plow on. Uh, now, if you have any questions uh, about the models which you see here, now, if you're watching the live version, down the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see there's a live chat going on. Uh, and, of course, you can jump in and ask any questions as we go along. And I will be doing my best just to uh, uh, jump across to the laptop and check on your chat as well. Uh, and we'll have, uh, and I'll do my best to answer any questions which you've got. However, if you're watching the recorded version, then don't forget you, there's two places you can ask, or you can either ask in the comments section underneath this video, or you can nip across to the Facebook group. Now there is a link to the Facebook group, or there will be a link to the Facebook group, because I've just remembered I've not put it in there. Like I said, it's live, so we leave all um, uh, funnies in. Uh, and I'll put a link to the Facebook group, Hit the join button and one of us will pick up your request later this today uh, for that. Uh, now, there is two topics which I'd just like to get out of the way first, okay? Uh, and this is, uh, well, no, it's three actually. Number one, the, these models are from a UK company. So if you're based in the United States or down in Australia or New Zealand or maybe in Europe, then the shipping is going to be a little bit expensive for you, okay? I get the same, exactly the same issue when I'm buying from the United States because not only will shipping be expensive, I'm guaranteed to get that letter of lube from the post office telling me that they've legally, I'm not even going to say that, family friendly, whatever. So, yeah. So, shipping, if you're in the UK, it's happy days, it's like six quid or something, it's a joke. Uh, if you're outside the UK, the shipping from these models are more expensive. That's just the way it is. Remember, I get the same issues in reverse. I would also like to do an announcement section as well. It is the Kefu's first birthday. Exactly one year ago, she was ready for her maiden. Uh, and you will still see, this is like one of the rare self-build models which I made uh, with my own hands and knives. Brilliant model. However, she's done so well together we are going to be building version two together live at this desk. Okay, so in the next week or two, look out for a series of videos. And what we're going to do, uh, we are going to make, there's a couple of things which I'd like to change about this model. And we, by the way, we'll, we'll get to these in a moment. There's a couple of things which I'd like to change about this model. Uh, I'd like a bigger wingspan. I'd like to be able to fly bigger battery. I would love 
for her to have forward swept wings as well uh, so that we get that really really great profile in the sky um, so yeah I just want to build upon this model and make it better if that makes sense so we are going to be doing a Keifu 2 brilliant and we'll be able to do it together um, as far as like a practical point, you're only going to need like one sheet of Depron uh, or what's it, Dollar Tree foam board to uh, to build it. Uh, all the other components are pretty obvious. You're going to need two motors. Oh, there is an oddity. You'll need some four mil carbon rod or some knitting needles or something very similar to that. Uh, I will put some more details in the Facebook group later this e later this evening for you. Uh, but we will be doing a build along series. No idea what's going to happen with that one. Also, a second announcement, I need to find what I did with my coffee, uh, is that there's a <laughs> there's a YouTube channel, uh, and uh, Sean Woods is his name. Uh, he's got a couple of million subscribers. Anyway, I love the format of what he does. He does a Mousetrap Monday. And as of today, I would like, like to announce that we are going to be doing a Model Monday. So this is where we take a look at a model once a week. Mate, to be honest, the amount of models I get here, we can, we can go on for a, a couple of days a week. Uh, but the premise will be uh, not a mousetrap Monday. It will be a model Monday where we take a look at a model. Uh, we go over the positive points. We look at the negative points. We look at the setup. Uh, and we're going to rate it against a scorecard of a couple of key details like value for money, ease of build. Uh, and, and a couple of other points as well uh, and uh, my goal is for, for that video to be five to ten minutes long so that you get like a little mini review uh, of each video and of course if you think about it that I've published over like over a thousand videos now on YouTube I have a absolute massive wealth of uh, flight footage for pretty much every single model which is here uh, and we will be doing a model Monday starting next week okay right with that said, I'm going to take a quick sip of coffee. Now, a quick one for you, top one or bottom one. For me, it makes no difference. We'll, we'll take a look at the top one and we'll take a look at the bottom one. Uh, first person to shout in the chat, we'll go with that. Uh, and we'll go from there. So I'm just going to take a quick sip of coffee. Uh, Kevin, five to ten minutes. Yeah, right. That won't happen. That is my goal. <laughs> when, we get to, when we get down to five to ten minutes... Uh, that is very, very true. So as you can see, the chat's going on uh, down the uh, right-hand side of your screen. And that's me looking that way just to check on the other screen. Uh, top, Kevin was the top one. Right, Kevin, uh, let's go and get into this one. I don't know which way around they are. I think I've already broken the seals on this one. They literally just turned up today. Uh, to, to be honest, I was half expecting it last week. Uh, but then I, and again, I messaged, um, what's his name, Rob, it flying wings. Uh, I say, oh, is it being shipped yet? You've got a tracking number. And he said, oh, there was a bit of a muddle, Matt. It'll, I'll ship it out today, which is like fair enough. Um, it saves getting BS, doesn't it? So it uh, turned up today. So most chuffed about that. Uh, and there we go. That's what we got in the box. Now, you will notice that we have a top camera, which is, uh, there's me pointing, it's on that side of your screen. Uh, and you'll be able to see what's on my desk. So let's get these bits out. And uh, which one have we pulled? Oh, this looks like the uh, spec one. Oh, nice. Oh, hello. Jeez. Right, first impressions. Can you see that on the camera? I am just going to... I came prepared, miss. Uh, we have... What's that? Six mil? Iron it up. Maybe even seven mil. Or, if you do it in inches, it's quarter of an inch. It really is quarter of an inch balsa wood. Um, I ain't even got out of the box yet, and I'm quite surprised by that. Quarter of an inch, six, maybe seven mils worth of, um, and it's that's really stiff balsa wood as well. So, actually, that that was uh, unexpected. Now, to be honest, I didn't really read the description. Oh, they've even included a roll of lamb. You will see how much lamb I got here. Yeah, way too much. Anyway, let's get this out of the way. Uh, right, this model is the spec wing. Now, it's a WRA spec wing. Now, I am sure to some of you. That means something really important. Uh, to me, that means that it's like a standardized aerofoil. And it means that me, Dave, Andrew, Craig, whoever else can all fly 
uh, together uh, uh, with a very, very similar model and setup, okay? Uh, now, the wing cord itself is some special wing cord. Uh, well, no, it's just a unified swing cord. It, this model was built to a specification. Uh, and let me have a click on the bits we got. And then what else have we got in this box? So we've got a couple of pieces, pieces of carbon, uh, two hardwood balsa, that really thick balsa wood, uh, which we've got on there. And let's open that up as well. Take a note, we've got a funny piece of whatever and a bag. We get some instructions, which we'll probably not read. Uh, we get a motor mount in there. Just gonna quickly put, put these pieces together. Two core flute wing tips. Oh yeah, there was a real oddity. I, t I saw this on Dave's. Is that there's a piece of plywood which is supposed to glue up on the front underneath like the battery bay, which is very much a curiosity. It seems to work with Dave's. I've got no idea what that piece is for. Uh, and uh, I didn't see any push rods in the kit. And again, that might have fallen out and I might have lobbed it in the box. I can't see them in the box, so I will just quickly check. Uh, no, they're not in there. Oh, no, that's because they're there, <laughs> right in front of me. Uh, foam motor mount, and that sticks on there, a bit of plywood. Uh, and you get the, it's quite nice because you do get the push rods, you do get the clevises, you get the decent, and I'll put them up there. You do get the decent control horns. Uh, the ones with the screws which go all the way through the wood, which is always a good... They're better than the push free ones, put it that way, especially when going into balsa. And I'll just put those bits down there so you can see them on the desk, and I've really got no idea what that's for. Um, it looks like a little knacker duck, doesn't it? Uh, quite peculiar, and I'll stick that over there. Uh, and it does come with three pieces of carbon strip. Now, I know that's not glass fibre, because it looks like carbon, and it sounds like carbon fibre as well. Uh, and we do get some stickers... Uh, too. So to be honest, let's think about this. This kit, for the, so this flying wing was 30 quid. So we'll say $45, something like that. It's a 36 inch flying wing and it was 30 quid. I think that is exceptional value for money, especially when you look at all the parts, parts which you get. You get carbon fiber, that's not glass fiber, that's carbon fiber, it sounds, it's definitely carbon fiber. You've got the motor mount, the plywood in there. You've got decent balsa wood, and they're the hard balsa wood on the back. Uh, and you've got the moulded out core flute uh, wing tips as well. Obviously, I need to cut in a battery bay and sort an FPV kit, and I will put a, a 3D print, a little nose cone for an FPV camera on the front as well. Uh, but it's not going to be a hard build by any stretch of the imagination. I, I would like to, by the end of this episode, get some glue down that middle bit as well, so we can get it uh, at least halfway on the way to getting built. Uh, but I think, personally speaking, 30 quid is absolute fantastic value for money. Now, I was talking about the spec wing. So this is the WRA spec wing, uh, and it literally was 29.95, something like that. A bit, just a bit for still, to be honest. Uh, now, there's one point which I want to make here, is that we're going to be, like, racing, in inverted commas, but we're, we're racing in inverted commas. As in that we're not going to, like stick hard and fast to to the rules uh, and we've already been and changed them <laughs> for our own benefits and the reason why we've been and changed them because apparently you needed some rare cobra motor uh, for the specs so what we've been and done for hours uh, we've just kind of like settled on our wing or wing cord so craig's already been hot wire cut his own ones and that's fair dues he's working on a budget you know uh, i've bought this one dave's already got his as well uh, and I think Craig is, uh, sorry, Dave's got, um, Andrew's getting one as well. Uh, but we're all going to stick to the same motor, and that will be a Turnergy D2826, excuse me, 2200 kV motor. And the reason why we're going for that motor is that number one, I've already got lots, and I've given Craig one. I'm pretty sure Dave's got one on his. Uh, they're super cheap, they're like six, seven quid. Super cheap, okay. Uh, six by four propeller, fair match to the motor uh, and the, the only bad bit well the only bit which i like half like and half don't like is that we will be sticking to a 2200 milliamp fear 3s battery so instead of using 4s for that setup which would normally be my personal choice for that kind of setup uh, is that we will be using 3s so again that kind of like levels the playing field and also just like from a completely practical point of view if you think about it if we've got 
anywhere between four to six of these flying around in the sky. To be honest, we really want them flying on 3S because if it's on 4S, uh, it's number one, it would be absolute carnage. Uh, number two, the noise will just be too much with all those models flying around at the same time. So 3S, while I think it's a bit camp, it actually, from a practical point, point of view, it's not a bad idea. Okay, not a bad idea at all. So that's the spec wing. Now, it's really straightforward. Uh, oh, by the way, I won't be putting um, anything like special in here. I'll put a Runcam Micro Swift, uh, sorry, a uh, Runcam Mini Swift in the nose. Uh, I'll be using a TX526 um, 5.8 video transmitter in one wing. I'll be using a D4R2 in the other wing. Uh, in there again, I'll try and keep everything in the middle as it goes. Oh, uh, a 30 or 40 amp ESC is not in our specifications. Uh, the reason being uh, is that just allows us a bit of flexibility. The key point here is the battery staying on 3S and the motor and the prop. The ESC is that, to be honest, I'm going to put mine on a, a 30 amp quad ESC, knowing in my mind that I might overcook it or I might set fire to it, you know? Uh, and that's fine. Again, I want to keep the weight down uh, on my build specifically. So uh, that's the specs which we're, go we're going with. And it's not true WAR, sorry, WRA uh, specification. It's what works out cheapest for us as a group, okay? So anyway, get getting back to my point, it's going to be a super simple build. There's nothing complicated here. Uh, all I'm going to be doing is just sticking the wings together with a bit of E6000 glue. Uh, I will be mocking up the wing, as in that I will work out where I need certain bits in the model so that I make sure that I hit the center of gravity on the model. Uh, obviously, I will be putting laminate on the model, so that's going to change it slightly. Uh, but I will set it up so it's slightly no nose heavy to complicate that for, um, to compensate for that. But all I've been going to be using is some E6000 glue to stick the middle all together. And frankly, uh, I could just cheat and put some hot glue on it because hot glue is going to work fine. Uh, and it'll probably make the build an awful lot quicker, especially for that middle section. Because normally what would happen now uh, is that if I wasn't broadcasting live to you, is that what I would do uh, is I up, put it on a flat surface, glue up, put a load of E6000 glue on it, pin it together, and then just leave it overnight. Whereas that if I was time pressed or you were time pressed, is that you could just get a bit of dirty hot glue. Hot glue it together, stick it in. The one area which I wouldn't use um, dirty hot glue uh, is that what I did notice is that up underneath this wing, uh, is that <clears throat> there are spaces, look at that, see, 30 quid, absolute steal. Uh, there are the holes down here for the carbon fiber strips. Uh, so that means that I can then just stick them in and that's just, you don't get much simpler like build wise, do you? All I would do is get the E6000 glue and I'm just gonna screw it. In fact, that's the one thing which I'm gonna do tonight before we go uh, is that I'm just gonna run some E6000 glue all the way down that strip down the front and then just jam that carbon fiber in there. Uh, happy days. And again, the really reason why I'll be able to do that is that because I can see the space up at the nose, you'll be able to see that above, uh, is that what I'll do uh, is I'll get the 3UD printer going and print out a nose cone for her. So that is the spec wing. If you've got any questions, please just ask. Now I am just gonna take a moment, just have a look uh, at your chat, uh, Lorenzo says, did you see the new Matek flight controller for planes? Yes, I did. Rather expensive. Uh, personally, won't be buying one myself. Uh, if I'm, again, remember this is a self-funded YouTube channel. Uh, and um, I, again, there's some things which I buy uh, just to see what it's like. Some things because I really know what it's gonna be like. For example, this one. Uh, but the, the Matek board, to be honest, I prefer the F4 boards than the cheaper ones. They're like half the price. Uh, obviously, I've, I've, I've seen the very good reviews from uh, people who have not bought it to go on and do reviews or do affiliate stuff with. Uh, and the feedback which I've personally seen far, so far has been very good. So Lorenzo uh, personally won't be buying that myself, uh, but I've already heard good feedback about the board, but just be aware uh, it's quite expensive for what it is, okay? Uh, quickly just go and down your chat on there. Uh, Chris says the other one has to be the revenge. I don't know. You're going to find out in a moment though. Uh, and it has been <laughs> out of stock. Yeah, we kind of cleared them out. Uh, the, the video which I put up with Dave's where we were having a chit chat with Dave about his uh, is that it did clear out pretty quickly. I did 
uh, do my dues, and, and again, I'm not affiliated with Flying Wings, so I want to make that completely clear mm -hmm. here, uh, is that I did ping the bloke and say, you might want to put some in stock, so if you check their website later, hopefully there's some stock on there. Uh, if not, check back in a couple of days, okay? Uh, quickly moving on. And your chat. I'm just trying again. You've seen the chat going on, and I'm just doing my best to catch up on there. Uh, so a quick look. Brad says, "No, not hot glue flies too fast; it will melt." Uh, <laughs> again, it's hot glue, as we've proven. And uh, there's a there's an RC coffee chat which I did last year at some point. Uh, hot glue was the surprise winner, for, especially for EPP foam. It does stick very, very well to EPP foam. Uh, my only reservation would be, uh, again, if I'm trying to keep the weight down because it's supposed to be a racing wing, uh, it would it's quite heavy compared to, say, E6000 glue. Uh, and the, I know people say about it melting, but come on. I mean, I'm looking out my window. It's the United Kingdom, you know. Uh, it, we don't get that hot air for, for at least for us to get worried about it melting. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's the, to be honest, on, on that model's, uh, life expectancy list it getting too hot is like its last which is one of the like the minor ones uh, being set fire to would be a major concern to it uh, trees bushes uh, and hedges would be more of a danger to that model than the hot glue melting uh, so anyway let's go and put that one to one side out of the way uh, yeah genuinely impressed 30 quid that's that's a 36 inch wing that's a lot of model for your money and again I'm not gonna bash this one on the desk uh, but just be aware, it's made of EPP. It's black EPP. Uh, and we'll discuss about black EPP when I'm doing the other model. Uh, because black EPP, for some strange reason, does seem to be much tougher than uh, white EPP. And wh when I say tougher, it seems to be whatever they put in there, I don't, because I don't, maybe it's just like this lowest grade black foam which they use and as such it's really tough I don't know uh, but it blunts the knives it's crazy stuff absolute crazy stuff so yeah if you can if you ever get a choice between white EPP and black EPP uh, always go for the black stuff because that is the best stuff I managed to put this the wrong way round twice good lad Matt so I'm just gonna get this one open uh, like I said did turn up earlier today got a photo for it uh, so I could pop it in the Facebook group and as the main image for this video. Uh, yeah, absolutely still. Now, before we go any further, let me just quickly just check on the chat as well. Uh, Brad, we did mention about the shipping costs outside the UK. It will be more expensive. Okay, it's just like me buying something from a US-based supplier. Uh, I'm guaranteed to pay really high shipping uh, and 99.9% .9 of the time, I will get the uh, import tax certificate as well, which be whatever it is, it will be an extra 12 pounds on top. So uh, this is one of those instances where it works in reverse because this has come from a UK supplier. Uh, right, uh, Joe says, uh, all planes will flutter with enough speed. Yes, uh, Alan says, will it flutter? Now, that's actually a very serious question. Uh, we haven't seen it flutter. Uh, I did see the prototype. Uh, and I did see a very curious uh, flight uh, abnormally. Is, is that the word which I'm looking for? Uh, a weird characteristic. Now, I'm not going to mention what that is. I'm going to leave it to Dave to, to see whether he publishes that one or not. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the video description afterwards. Uh, but it was uh, a very weird abnormally with it flying. Uh, that said, uh, it has nothing really to do with it. It won't flutter, put it that way. Uh, and as we've already seen from the previous video, which I've done on the uh, the Revenge, and that's kind of given that one away, uh, is that it does absolutely haul us down the flight line, uh, to say the least. So with that said, let's get this one open. Uh, we'll take a look in this box as well. Uh, so I'm just going to do my best to get these bits out. Uh, anything which stands out as I do it, like we did on the last one, uh, is that there is a template location. Uh, by the way, I, I know on the template location, I did get a template location for the Genesis wing, uh, which I bought from Flying Wings before. Uh, again, nice little manual in there. Again, it will all be perfect perfect English because it's come from uh, a UK-based supplier. Uh, and uh, 
There was one Odyssey. I, I didn't get on with the template for the Genesis and I decided to change it on mine. Whether I keep to this one or not, not entirely sure. Uh, we'll see once we get a bill. And again, you'll notice that I'm pulling out push rods. I've paid twice, three times the money for other models uh, and have less parts in the kit. Keep that in the back of your mind. Now, some of you may be wondering, Matt, right, what model is this? Uh, and how much was it? And where did you get it? So this model is called the Revenge. Uh, it's a new model by flyingwings.co.uk. Remember, not affiliated with that company at all. Uh, the reason why I've bought it is that you, as of I, uh, have probably seen the video of Dave flying his, and it absolutely hauls down the flight line. Brilliant. Uh, and of course, I was there filming it at the time, going, go on, give it some knacker. Uh, so yeah, I've bought it because I've seen one, and they're really, really cool. Uh, carbon fiber spa by the looks of it. I hope that's hollow. Yes, it is a hollow spa uh, down the middle. So that's classed as happy days. We got, yeah, there's an oddity with this model. We'll get to that in a moment. I'll see if we can get some of these bits out as we go through. Plywood, uh, sorry, balsa wood. Again, that's the hard balsa wood. That's not the, it's not as thick as the one wing, which we, the ones which we've just seen. But uh, yeah, what's that? Four mil, something like that. And that's the hard bolts and not the normal soft modeling stuff. Uh, let's go push rods, which we've got in there. Pre-bent as well. Uh, we got, oh yeah, look at that, we've got the whole the spa. I wonder if we can get this one roughly put together. Uh, and we'll see how we get on. Right, let's go have a quick look on there. Uh, Andrew Bolton says, 92 miles per hour. <laughs> let's have a quick look. Yeah, did he... Uh, so I'm just looking at the chat and you can see Austin is down there. By the looks of it, one of them had the um, radar gun out at the funny farm over the weekend. Unfortunately, I had to leave early uh, due to family commitments. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it does 92 miles an hour because uh, it really did haul down the flight line. Uh, now, I am just having a look at some of these parts. Oh, okay. It's nice to see that we got a nice bit of, again, pre-fitted uh, carbon fiber rod that is carbon fiber rod uh, inside the vertical fin that's really really nice to see again knowing what i know uh, on there top hatch oh look it even comes can you see that there not as good as what one would say the uh, right wing ones are uh, but still looks like it would be more than adequate for the flight line and there's hardly any weight in that as well two pieces of carbon strip what we got here looks like that fuselage. Ah, now this is where the fun begins because I'm pretty sure that's spare foam. Uh, so uh, we would all agree that this is a hammer or commonly known as a persuader. Okay, uh, I've just hit the living daylight, family friendly daylights out of that foam. Okay, uh, and you can see the damage on that foam is to be honest, quite severe. It actually did way more damage than what I was expecting. Uh, but on a serious note, if you did that with white EPO foam, and I'm sure you know the foam which we're talking about, uh, for example, there's the, um, don't mention it, but that might be the large uh, Sky Hunter. If I did that to white EPO foam, there would be like no rescue in it at all. Uh, to be honest, there's there's not much rescue in that one either. I've hit it far too hard with a hammer. <laughs> Just look at the state of that, honestly. Uh, but it's black EPP foam. It is, it's dense, uh, it's lightweight, and it's damn tough, considering I've just smashed the living daylights out of it with a hammer. So I really hope that I didn't need that bit. Uh, I think I only need that bit, which is the fuselage, which looks like that's all I need. And uh, I'll get this built up in a second as I take a look on here. We've got a couple of extra bits as well. That looks like the piece on there. I, oh look, <laughs> we have some dirty bits. Uh, I have dirty edges, please clean me with a damp rag. <laughs> How cute is that? And what was nice if we had a model like that? Turn up with a little message on there saying, please clean me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then Bernie, I really hope that's, uh... yeah, anyway, let's not even go there. Um, on a serious point, I have just smashed the living daylights out of that foam. If I'd done that with a bigger hammer, so it, it had been less acute uh, on the, uh, what should we call it, on the um, foam, 
it would have been better maybe viewing for yourself. But you'd have to take your word for it. Um, the I think that's the right way around. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's done well. I'll read the instructions, honest, uh, afterwards. Uh, and uh, let's get that on that side as well. Is that the right way up? I think that's the right way up. No, I put that the wrong way up. Again, this might be the right, wrong way round. It is what it is. Like I said, I'll look at the instructions afterwards. We're just trying to get it roughly built up so that you... Oh! Were you supposed to bet those bits of foam on the... <laughs> you weren't supposed to, you're supposed to... You're not supposed to keep the aerofoil pieces. You're supposed to keep the middle bits. Uh, so I'm going to have to go and grovel on there to go and get those bits back. Because <laughs> those are the bits which I actually needed. Oh, there. What's he like? Uh, let's have a quick look. <laughs> Yes, spare foam with a wing section. God damn it. Who knew you were supposed to put that in the middle? Hey ho. Just can't get the staff. You really can. Right, I think that's supposed to go in there. And again, no special build skills required. Uh, in theory, you could build this with a bit of hot glue. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't build this with hot glue. Uh, E6000 glue, or just because of the sheer size of these panels, uh, E6000 would perhaps get a little bit expensive doing it that way. Uh, personally, I would use, say, Yuhu Pour, uh, my favourite uh, glue, which does turn yellow with the sunlight, uh, which won't show up on the black. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll use that instead. So let's move that over there. Oh, one thing which I do want to quickly note is that I've seen Dave's build. And I've seen Richard in the Facebook group. So Richard, thank you for your uh, feedback earlier. We were chatting about this in the Facebook group. Uh, is that I've been and seen both of their builds. And what I saw was that they have been to put the servos on the top of the wing, wherever it's supposed to go. Uh, but what they, what both of them have done, what both Dave and Richard has done, and what I'm going to do differently, is that they've put the servo on the top of the wing and then run the cable down the top of the wing. And for me, I don't like that because you end up with this really obvious line on the top of the wing, which is that even if you went on to laminate it afterwards, or then we put, put a cuddled laminate or tape this wing up, is that you still see the, see the line. What I'll be doing on mine is mounting the servo on the top, but on the underside, then running the wire through the bottom. So that does mean that once I've cut the hole out for the servo, is that I'll then poke through, push the connector through, and then run a slit along there and then run the servo connector on the underside of the wing so that when I and you look at the top of the model, it looks flawless. Tiny little detail. I know it's me being like, whatever, uh, but that's the point. Uh, one little tiny, tiny point which I picked up uh, and that's one thing which I'll be doing different with my build specifically. Now, I am just gonna see if I can get those bits just to put those little wing tips up on the top here somewhere, I think they go in there like that. Again, they don't have to be perfect, they just need to, just roughly, so that you can see roughly what the model looks like. Now there was a nose cone, something on the front, which uh, will need carving out, so that will get sat on the nose. We saw balsa wood, uh, aerofoil, uh, sorry, elevons on the back. I wondered why we got these funny little aerofoil bits. Anyway, uh, and we've got uh, some core flute, which we can use as, uh, flaps uh, or maybe a skid underneath and stuff again I haven't read the instructions again the instructions are brilliant there it will be fantastic English and you go through now what's the recommended motor <laughs> we'll get to that in just a moment so this is uh, the revenge now one thing which I personally really like about the revenge and I only noticed it when I paused to, to, to look at Dave's a couple of days back uh, is that what this model has uh, and I need to pick this up so I can show you Okay, I hope that you can see this as well, is that what we've got here uh, is that by the time you put your motor on the back of this model, and again, you'll be able to see it in the top view camera. Uh, let me go, I've got a couple of motors stored up here. Let's choose a suitably sized motor. This is a Cobra uh, 2820, 1100 kV motor. So we need a nice big chunky prop for that. Uh, and uh, imagine that mounted out on the back is where that propeller is, so we use the ruler as the propeller and you'll be able to see above, uh, is the propeller is right back there, out of the way. Now that's the thing, is that the one biggest thing which I noticed uh, about Dave's 
Revenge Wing uh, is that it was very quiet. For what I was expecting, I thought it was going to be ripping the sky a new one. And really screaming. It was about half as loud as what I was expecting. Uh, and the reason for that, uh, I feel, is because the motor was so far pushed back out into cleaner air uh, and away from the back of the any surfaces so with the propellers not chopping against like the back of the uh, elevon for example or uh, any fins or anything like that it's out there in clean air and it does seem to make it an awful lot quieter so that was again that's the reason why it's sat here today is because i was personally impressed by uh, how for the speed it was doing compared to the noise which it made was happy days i did like the look at that uh, Brad says, are these all right wing models? No. So those of you which have just been enjoying in live, uh, these are from a company called flyingwings.co.uk. It's a UK based company. This one is called The Revenge, uh, which cost me, wait for it, 40 quid, is, which is frankly a joke. Um, it's you really do get 40 quid's worth of model. Uh, I hope you can see it in front of you. Again, if you consider everything which is in the kit, uh, I need to put some servos in, I need to put some electronicals, and a bit of glue okay it's not a complex build on uh like on a in the scheme of things to be honest it's probably going to take longer to laminate it than it is to put the whole model together like with the foamy bits okay uh because it's all really straightforward so the, the only tricky bit is going to be getting the servo positions in the same place on both sides. That's about it, really. Uh, and maybe a little bit annoying trying to cut out the nose cone uh, to fit a run cam up in the nose. OK, uh, so, yeah, there are a few little intricate bits in there, but it's not hard. It's not if you've built a similar style boss, a wing where you've had to, to build up and you've received the cores and things like that. This isn't going to phase you. OK, uh, it's not a good first build, I would hasten to add, like your first model. Uh, that's for sure. It's definitely not your first model, uh, but it's not hard. It's not complicated. It's not like a balsa build where you have to put a million parts together and then get the sand input thing out. And that didn't work out very well, did it? Uh, so, yeah, it's not a complex build uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so anyway, uh, getting back uh, to your chat. Yes, Lauren, that was absolutely right on there. Uh, Davey says, Matt must have been asleep when he watched Dave's build. I haven't watched Dave's build yet, I must admit. Uh, on there, again, I, I did. it's nothing against Dave, okay? I just have, I have about five YouTube channels which I will watch, uh, and I don't watch much else as far as YouTube goes. Again, I don't watch even, even watch any TV. Uh, so don't take it personally, Dave. I just have a finite amount of time uh, to do stuff and I'm very selective in what I do watch. Uh, anyway, moving on. Um, Robson, uh, sorry, Lauren says, God, that motor looks huge. Now, I'm glad you said that because uh, let's talk about power plants for this. The spec wing, which we saw earlier, it's a known entity. We've got to put a D2826, 2200 KV with a six by four prop on it. That's what that model's having. I'm sure we've all seen those motors before. However, this one is the, uh, I have kind of decided, I need to take a quick walk over there, uh, exactly what kind of battery I'm going to be putting in it. Now, Dave runs his on a, with a 2200 uh, 4S pack, uh, and I'll, I'll get one of those, uh, and then I'll show you what I'm going to be sticking in mine. Whoops. There we go. So Dave uses exactly the same battery on it, ironically. It's the uh, Zippy Compact 25C 4S. Uh, which, to be honest, is, this one's a little bit puffy. But then again, I have abused it quite a lot. <laughs> and again, I was looking at the photos about the cave food this morning. Uh, and on it, next to me, it was one of those... Uh, uh, <laughs> one of the 1.3S batteries showing 0%. They're still running right now, a year later. Well, it's had, a couple of them have started to sag, but what do you expect with the amount of abuse they've given? Uh, so Dave does fly his with a Zippy Compact 2200 battery pack. Uh, I do rate the Zippy ones. I've just been and bought the high C ones, the 60s to 65C ones myself. Uh, they are a little bit thicker, which is to be expected, and they were a little bit more expensive. Uh, so I've got those as an option, uh, potentially for this model. However, my gut personal goal is, uh, is to fit this bad boy in there, uh, uh, which is the Multistar 5200 4S pack. Now, I, I've personally come to the conclusion 
that the best battery ever for every single model airplane, uh, if possible, is the Multistar 5200 pack because you just get so much flight time. Uh, if we talk about, say, the Mini Talon, for example, well, you're talking 45 minutes plus, and I mean 45 minutes plus flight time in the sky. Obviously, you're only cruising around at, say, 4 amps. Uh, if we talk about the Mini Drac, you're talking a good 10 minutes of full throttle fun, full, full throttle fun with one of those in there. Uh, and I've got a collection of other models here. Uh, and the reason why I like these is because like with like the Hardcore 44, for example, uh, is that when I'm flying with, say, Dave and Craig, is that they'll go out and do, we'll go and have 10 minutes in the sky. And I'm, of course, there chasing them around, just mucking around as I normally do. Uh, and then they'll land because their batteries are going flat. And then I'll land because... I don't want to be a loner. Uh, and then uh, we'll go off and fly again. But the thing is, is that I've just left my battery in there and then reconnect it up and I'll go and have a second flight uh, with the same battery. Uh, so yes, that is my goal. And I know we're gonna have a slight issue with wing loading, uh, but it is my goal to be able to fly with a 5200 mini outfit uh, 4S pack. Uh, <laughs> in the future, that is seriously what I'm gonna be looking to do with that model. now. Obviously, that's a serious amount of weight in this model. Wing loading is going to be high. Uh, as such, I need a bit of a model, a bit of a motor, uh, which is going to give us uh, a little bit of oomph. Now, Dave went for the prop drive, the V2, uh, which is the 2836, 2200 kV motor. Now, to be honest, I'm not really a fan of the prop drive motors. If they fix the bearings, that's happy days. Uh, but to be honest, I don't want to waste any more money on prop drive motors because my personal experience with them has not been good, especially in the higher KV motors. Anything above 2000 KV, uh, the bearings have had serious issues with. So that's not something which I want to repeat. Uh, so uh, again, I don't want to be buying motors. Many of you may have seen the episode which I did a short while ago uh, where I kind of admitted that uh, I might be a bit of an RC addict and I might have a few motors. Uh, now, for this wing specifically, I do have a few choice motors, which I've been and chosen specifically for this motor. Uh, the first one was that Cobra motor, uh, which, um, let's be fair here, that's quite a lot of gravity in uh, made out of copper windings in that motor. Uh, and that's a 1,170 kV, mo uh, kV motor. So that means is that we are going to be needing to swing a slightly larger prop. That will probably, and again, I can check the specs online, that will most likely be a, be a 9x6, okay, on 4S. It could even be a 10-inch prop on that. Now, you think about that for a moment. A 10-inch prop with a honking great big motor on the arse end of something which, go, which we know flies like a rocket ship with a 5200 4S pack on it, which isn't too loud. There are going to be some disasters lined up for this model. If, if I don't write this model off um, by doing trying to do a ton through the trees... Uh, I will be very, very surprised. So look out for that in the next couple of months. Now, there are some cheaper options out there because the Cobra motors are frankly stupidly expensive and I don't suggest that you buy them. Uh, they're very good, but they take ages to get to you and they're very expensive. That said, uh, there are some other options which I've got here. Uh, this is kind of my go-to motor for a good mo um, motor and prop combo. Uh, that is the Turnigy D3536 1450 kV motor. Uh, I may, have, to be honest, I may end up with this one because it's got a slightly higher KV. Uh, and the reason why I'll go with that one, probably an 8x6 with uh, <laughs> a 60 amp ESC in there. Uh, and that will give us loads and loads of thrust, of thrust. I did come to personally come to the conclusion that was the best motor and prop combo for the Texumo uh, wing. Uh, is that you can run that motor on 4S with an 8x6 absolutely crazy uh, if you want to run it with 3s with the same motor you increase the propellers to 9x6 and it's absolutely mental fun and the wild card which i have here is that uh, many moons ago is that i bought a grasshopper uh, which was a j3 piper cub uh, from hobby king which was an absolute waste of money it was uh, I, I could tell you many bad things about it uh, but put it this way, uh, I felt very good when I wrapped it around my kneecap and then stuck it in the bin. It was literally stuck in the bin. Even the bin man commented like, what the fuck is that? Uh, anyway, I did nick the electronicals out of it. I do have a huge gate big motor uh, and a huge gate big prop. Uh, I, I don't even know how big that is. How big is that? Oh, it's a good 12 inches. Look, 12 inches. 
Uh, it's got a 12 inch prop on it. It's probably far too big for this model. Uh, and now looking at it in proportion, uh, I won't use that one. Maybe one day I might use that on another model. So I'll put that one out the way. Uh, and again, that would have been quite nice because it had an ESC already wired to it and things like that. So yeah, uh, I yeah, it will be the Cobra or the Turnergy motor. Not entirely sure which one just yet. Uh, and we do get a little box of other bits as well. Get push rods. Oh, we got the rear motor mount on there. Uh, and we got three other bits and bobs. Okay. Again, nice to have all the parts in the box. 40 quid. 40 quid. Brilliant. It even includes the push rods. That's great. How many times have you gone to build a model and then noticed there are no push rods in the box? Very frustrating. Anyway, let me get to your chat uh, and have a look. Uh, Howdy Sean's, by the way, really cool design though. I give you that, it is a very cool design. We've not really looked at this model, have we? Let me move those motors in out of the way. Uh, and to be honest, I was kind of frankly opening that we'd have a bit of a chit chat and then we'd go and get some of, the, get some of these models styled, but I don't think that's gonna really happen. Um, I'll tell you what, we could, well, there's no point. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna continue with that. So yeah, that was kind of my goal. But I've talked too much so far, so uh, we'll we'll, give, we'll skip that one, uh, if I'm honest. But yeah, Sean, give you does look pretty cool to say the least. Uh, quickly moving on as well. Uh, Bernie says flying wings do make some nice wings. He's got the Genesis. I've also got the Genesis. Uh, it's in there. Uh, so we'll quick look on there. Right. <laughs> uh, Les says forty five minutes. I would also need a break. Yes, we were hitting forty five minutes as well. Uh, right. Uh, Sean says that 3536 isn't too shabby on 3S with an 8x6 either. Yeah, Sean, it's a great motor. For me, I always ran mine with a 9x6 on 3S. Uh, and um, you kind of can, could kind of tell how dedicated I was or am to wings. I used to have two Tech Sumos. I would have one Tech Sumo which runs 3S and it had a nine by six propeller with the same motor on it and same ESC. And I had another Tech Sumo with the same motor, ESC and setup uh, with an eight by six propeller on it. And I ran that one on 4S. Uh, and then <laughs> I fly it one by one with the 3S battery packs. When I've used all them up, I would then go and fly it on 4S like a complete nutter. Uh, so yeah, really good motor and prop combos. And I did go through a lot of different motors uh, for the perfect motor for the Tech Sumo, and that was my choice selection. That was uh, after trying about six or seven different motors, uh, that was my best motor, which I found. And by the way, I even went up to 3,500 kV uh, with a motor which would pull a minimum of 87 amps in the sky. Flew like a rocket ship, sound not so good it sounded like a turbine in not a good way either anyway let's get on to your carry on with your chat as well uh brad says i vote the turnergy motor i think yeah we'll see i'll tell you what what i'll do is that I'll, I'll just quickly check the specs on the cobra motor and we'll see what that does uh, to be honest i think it will come down to uh prop size uh if we get too big if we go beyond nine inches excuse me then I think I'll stop. If, it, if that Cobra motor needs a 10 inch prop, I don't think I'll put it on there. Nine inch maybe. Uh, or I could just wire it up and give it a whirl. Try one, one way and see which one I like the most, you know? That's the other easiest thing to do for it. Uh, it won't be more than what, four screws and a couple of connectors just to stab, plug it in and swap it on the flight line. Not gonna be hard at all to do. Uh, it's all about the karma. Nice tan, absolutely. The spring stroke, so, no, is it? It's still spring. Uh, spring is here in the United Kingdom. We just had a fantastic bank holiday. Uh, some of you may have seen the uh, maiden of the extra, is it called an extra? Yeah, the extra 300. Uh, and uh, yeah, Matt was in very much in a May bank holiday mood when that was being filmed. Uh, even skived off work, which is really not like me at all. Uh, and I went off to fly it and go made in it and I was off my tree on coffee. So uh, some of you may or may not have seen that. Brilliant, talk too much? Never, absolutely. Uh, let's have a quick look, <laughs> quick look on there. Uh, the Goodness says, hello all, where are you people ordering your lipos nowadays? Uh, Banggood will not deliver to the EU anymore. Uh, and that's actually a very serious question. Uh, maybe one for the RC Coffee Chat on Wednesday. Uh, is that perhaps um, for me it's 
I've got some fantastic in, in, uh, Infinity batteries, uh, which I bought off Banggood. They are absolutely brilliant. I've not even got anywhere near puffing one of those packs yet. Uh, they have been really, really good. Uh, that said, I know they don't ship them to the UK anymore, which is really frustrating. Uh, so the Guinness, the Guinness, uh, the, oh sorry, the, the Guinness, uh, the best place for you, and again, you can see the chat going on there now on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, to be honest, is Hobby King. Uh, they have, they, you can't knock them. They do have some absolute fantastic batteries. Uh, and of course, if you've got uh, the Guinness, if you've got any, if you want suggestions for which batteries for which models, that is a prime example why you pop across to the Facebook group because chances are one of us owns the model and then can give you some suggestions on the different batteries or give you our own experiences with the different batteries because. There are good batteries out there, and there's definitely not good batteries out there. And I've had some good ones, and I've had some very good ones, and I've also had some very bad ones. And it's not directly proportional to the price paid. That's a big one for you to note in the back of your head as well. Right. Uh, Alan says, how will you launch a small model with a big prop? Uh, as Lauren says, carefully, uh, wingtip launch, to be honest. I, I don't know if you've seen me or uh, those of you, let me move this battery out of the way. Uh, how I normally launch all of my models uh, on wing design, I grab it by the wing, shut the bits off, grab it by the wing, and then just do a side launch like that. Okay, so grab it by the wing, and then do a side launch. I do it with all my models. Uh, uh, but to be honest, with the exception of the maybe like the XUAV clouds, which is a two hand job uh, to lob it, uh, or like the EF Extra, which is just lob it from the bottom. Uh, but all wings, pretty much all from the side, I side launch. And again, it's bad habit, but I've kind of got it down to a T now. I'm also right handed as well, so uh, and I'm Mo 2, so my aileron on an elevator is on the right stick, so it is kind of power up, lob it, and then straight down to the sticks. And yes. It does catch me out from time to time, uh, and I do try and share those screw ups on YouTube and the odd video or two. Uh, but 99% of the time, absolutely fine. So I always side launch my stuff. Uh, I wouldn't dream necessarily on something like that with a big propeller because you may not get your hand down fast enough uh, out of the way of the propeller. And by the way, I've only ever had one propeller stripe on my finger, uh, propeller strike on my fingers, uh, and you're going to laugh when I tell you which model it is. You'll never guess which model it was. Literally, just touch the top of my fingers. Okay, one prop strike in two years now, uh, and that was. You're gonna laugh. It was the mini Skywalker. No shit. I threw it, and I had my fingers too far back on the fuselage, and I had a six-inch prop spinning around, and it just went tap 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 on the end of my fingers. Mini Skywalker, the only model which I've been hit by a prop, and the only model touch wood I ever want to be touched by, uh, by a propeller, was a Mini Skywalker. And that's a top mounted motor as well. I just had my fingers too far back, and as I lobbed it, it went click, 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 just on the top of my fingernails. Uh, so that's the only time I've ever been clipped by a propeller, uh, and I do feel that's been down to me always preferring a side launch rather than an under launch, okay? Um, even with the I think we're like the mini talent with the motors at the back. I'm throwing that so hard uh, and so flat. My hand is down out of the way uh, every single time as well. So good question uh, there as well. Right. Yeah, that, and then that was my word. Yeah, side launch. Just chuck it side launch. It will be a little bit tricky with a bloody great big battery in it because obviously the model's going to weigh a ton and I am going to need to get the air speed up on there. Um, I would really like it to be able to, so I could fit that 5200 pack in there. Um, I may have to admit defeat later, but we will try it first and we'll see what happens. Uh, so that is my plan to get 5200 pack in there. Uh, if not, it won't be the 25C, it will be the 65C uh, Zippy battery for us, uh, which I get in that model. Again, it's really straightforward. FPV camera in the nose, video transmitter on the top, receiver somewhere inside of there. Uh, and oh, one thing which I did pick up from Dave's build, uh, is that I will get the uh, ESC back here and I will cut a hole out for the ESC uh, so that the ESC does get uh, literally maximum uh, airflow on the model. So let's think about this for a few moments. What kind of skills are required to, required to build this model? Uh, if we just quickly, well, I'm not going to take it apart. A bit of glue, just to glue these panels on the side. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of the plywood subframe in here. I understand why it's being used. 
uh, and I do, but I do feel after one good smack in a tree, it might be too far gone to recover it. Uh, that is my concern again. Uh, that's why I've never gone for like an Evo wing, which is another model which you can get from Flying Wings because one bad smack and it's all made out of plywood. I prefer it was made out of EPP, but again, it's horses for courses. I can put some carbon fiber rods in there to try and strengthen it up a bit. Um, coming back to the build skills required, nothing major. If you can cut a hole in some foam to put, any, uh, to put a servo in, uh, laminating would be the only concern, I feel, for, for like a new time builder. Now, if you've never laminated a model before, uh, I don't know if we saw a few moments ago that I'm pretty sure, was it this one which came with laminate? You may, oh no, it was an option on the website. You could have paid like five quid more and got the laminate for this model. I didn't choose that option uh, because I already had got, already got rolls of it here in the corner and I got some with that spec wing as well. Um, it's actually very easy and I did create a series on YouTube to take you through how to laminate a model. I saw Mark on the weekend over at the Funny Farm uh, and he'd watched my series on how to laminate a model and he had a Sonic model HD wing perfectly, and I kid you not, perfectly laminated. I couldn't have done a better job myself and that was the first time he laminated a model. Uh, so if Mark can do it and if I can do it, you can laminate a model like this. It's not hard. It's just down to a straightforward process, which is, in this case, it will be laminate the bottom of the wings first, then do the tops, and then do the fuselage. It's not hard. It's just a question of process. Hence why I made that little mini-series uh, a, <laughs> a short while ago. Right. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, there's Chris. How do you, Chris, by the way? I force 2 ds just been popped in. Anyway, it is time for me to wrap up. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing tonight is just quickly gluing up the sides on here and then just using a bit of tape just to make sure they stay on. Uh, I will look at the placement for the servos and the wings. Uh, again, like I said, I've, I've seen two other builds where they've got the wires going along the top. I don't like that. Mine will go through and I'll put the wires underneath. Personal preference, again, I want a clean top uh, of the model. Again, yeah, really straightforward build. That's the Revenge. Again, we're missing the fins on the top. Uh, the one bit which stands out for me, well, this, besides price, because it was only 40 quid, uh, is the motor is quite far back on this model, so it does mean that it does fly in fresh air, or fresher air, so that does keep the, considering the speed which this model does fly at, the noise is right down, so that's thumbs up. Again, uh, those of you which, which you fly in the UK, or have got neighbors, for example, uh, is that that's quite a polite way uh, of flying, you know, uh, and like if you were based in the United States and you live in a desert, well, you make as much noise as you want, you know, uh, but for us, we've always got to be considerate of our neighbours, uh, and I am just going to quickly just going to get down there and grab the spec wing as well, now if you think about the spec wing, uh, that was 30 quid, I think that was a bug, you know, you can definitely tell that's carbon just by the noise it made, uh, the spec wing turned up as well, again, black EPP, that kit was 30 quid. What did it come with? Carbon fiber came with a motor mount. It came with a laminate as well. Uh, it came with good instructions. Uh, and the 30 quid, black EPP, really nicely cut. Let me move that out there so you, you can see the cutting on the foam. Now that is actually a, a serious point is that I've seen models, um, CNC models, which have been very, very rushed through the cutting process uh, where the uh, wire which has been used has not been hot enough or it's been hot enough but it's been pushed through the foam so quickly and what you end up with is lots and lots of drags and lines being pulled through the foam itself whereas these because the wire has been hot enough and it's been pulled through the foam slow enough is that what we end up with is this very very it's, it's not smooth don't get me wrong it's rough uh, but compared to, to other wings which I've had here uh, it is very quite smooth and again all I do with that is get one of those sanding pads and then just quickly sand it up, clear off any big chunks and then it'll be perfect time for laminating. I won't need to put any like glue on there or spray glue, I'll just be able to laminate straight on uh, to the foam itself. Right, it is time for me to wrap up. I am just going to quickly go through my notes here just to make sure I haven't missed anything for you. Uh, now. Yeah, like I said back at the beginning, both of these models were bought out of my own money, okay? That was 30 quid, that was 40 quid, and I paid shipping. It turned up a couple of days later. It's from a UK company, so like I said, if you're in the UK, happy days, cheapest chips. 
Uh, if you're not in the UK, obviously the shipping's going to be more expensive. Just the way the cookie crumbles, you know, I have to pay high shipping if it comes in from the States, for example. Probably get done with in import tax as well. It's just the way it is. Uh, the spec wing, that's for us to go racing as a couple of us to go up. We'll all be using, like I said, and we're not keeping to it the exact WA, WRA spec. Okay, we're just going to keep the same motor, same prop and same battery. Everything else is pretty much flexible. Okay, it's just like kind of just keep it roughly the same, you know. Uh, so that's what we're going to be going with that one. The Revenge, uh, 40 quid. I've already seen it fly. Dave's got one. If you've not seen that model fly, nip across to the YouTube channel. So underneath this video where it says Matthew Ogborn, click on my name uh, and then go back a couple of videos. You might need to click the video tab at the top if you don't see it. Uh, and then there's the Revenge. Okay, and you'll see that model with two yellow patches on either side and it absolutely rips the sky. A new one. Vroom, vroom. It's great. And it's not very loud at all. So that's why I liked it and that's why I've kind of ended up with one here this evening uh and we spoke about motors oh one thing to note is that with the wra wing i will not i'll only be putting the cheap what was it uh m tower pro mg 90s fake servos in them okay uh because that's all it really needs isn't that model's not going to be going that fast however this one i will be putting some corona 939 MG servos in there, which is happy days. I found two in the servos box. I didn't realize I had any, so I've grabbed them out. Uh, they are, let me just quickly show you, uh, they're just like standard size, little nine gram, 12 gram servos. I'll get one out and I'll show you, uh, relative to my hand anyway. Uh, they are just like standard size servos, but they do, they're obviously heavier because they, they're all metal geared and I'll presume they're all metal geared in there. Those are great, they're, they're pretty cheap and they're really good quality. I have not managed to kill one of these yet. In fact, I've not managed to kill a single Corona survey, uh, if I'm frankly honest. So I've been really impressed with those, but just be aware, they are obviously far more expensive than £1.80, which is what I normally like paying uh, for servos, which are the Tower Pro, fake Tower Pro servos, but they're still metal geared, by the way. Right, uh, and what else did we speak about? Well, we left all mistakes in. I did hit that one a bit of foam a bit hard with the hammer, didn't it? I really ruined it. <laughs> Should have used a bigger hammer, it would have made less of a dent <laughs> for it. Uh, just for clarity, I'm not affiliated with flyingwings.co.uk. These models were bought out of my own money for my own abuses, just the way which I like it. Uh, if you have any questions about either of these models, remember you can ask in the comment section underneath this video, or you can nip across to the Facebook group. And remember those two announcements. Not only was it the KFU's birthday. But we are going to be doing a build along series to create a new KFU uh, that will be live at the desk. Again, yeah, we'll leave all screw ups in. Uh, and really, just to join in with that, obviously, you'll need two motors and a couple of bits. Okay. Uh, you will need one sheet of Depron. Uh, and the only oddity is that you will need some four millimeter carbon fiber rods. Okay. Or go and knit your mum's knitting needles or something similar. Okay. A couple of kebab skewers done together. That would also work. Uh, that's the only oddity those rods in there because I do like this model an awful lot. She's not going anywhere. Uh, I would definitely be keeping her. She just has no glide in it at all and I'd like to run a bigger battery uh, because I like this model so much, I fly it till it falls out the sky. Okay, so one little upgrade which I'll be doing in version two, uh, so the KFU2, uh, is that I will be putting a flight controller in the model. Uh, not a flight controller, I'll put an OSD in the model so I at least know that I should be landing immediately before it falls out of the sky into a tree, bush, you name it, it's probably landed in it. Uh, I have done many, many walks of shame to go and collect it because it just land I just fly the living nuts out of it and I really like it. Uh, so we are going to be making a version two. Uh, also, uh, look out for Model Mondays as well. We spoke about Mousetrap Mondays, where when I, uh, a very amusing, I find it amusing anyway, I think it's a very well structured uh, YouTube channel called um, Sean Woods, I think his name is. Look at just Google Mousetrap Mondays, you'll find it. Uh, we are going to be doing Model Mondays, where each Monday we will look at a model specifically. One will look at, I, I don't know what model is going to come first, to be honest. 
We'll look at the positive points. We'll look at the bad points. We'll look at the parts which you need to add uh, to get it off the line to go and fly it. We'll look at hopefully look at some flight footage as well. Again, being kind of lucky here, I've already got like over a thousand videos published on YouTube, so I've got plenty of flight footage to to lean against and uh, and I've. Goodness knows how many models I've been through, uh, but I've got plenty of models to compare it to as well. So we may do a little comparison section as well uh, as we go through. Uh, uh, and the goal is for five to ten minutes for Model Monday. Uh, and I will do my best to keep that to five to ten minutes as well. Anyway, it is time for me to go. Uh, I've just seen Alan on there. My KWU. Glide forever, Alan. Can you do me a favour in the Facebook group? Can you go and post a couple of pictures for me? Because the one thing which I really don't like about this model, the one like its biggest negative, uh, is not that I fly it till it falls out the sky. It has got zero glide, no glide at all to it. Uh, it was because I'm using a KFM4, so I've got a piece of. Um, I've gone for the simplest build possible. I've got a piece of uh, Depram on the top and on the bottom as well, so it does fly inverted fantastically well, uh, but. It's got no glide at all. So, Alan, I would love to see what you've been and done with your model. I'd really, really appreciate that. Anyway, it is time for me to go. I would like to say a massive thank you to you for taking the time to watch this live episode. Uh, remember, it was live. We did leave all screw-ups in, as we do. Uh, and uh, like I said, any questions, comments, good, bad or ugly, uh, please let me know down in the comments section underneath this video or pop across to the Facebook group, which I will go and put a link to that in the description in a few moments time so if you are going to bed have a great night uh, if it's early morning for you uh, i hope it's a flying day in short and on that note it's time for me to go so as always for myself matt cheerios now i need to go and stack over these boxes to try and get back to the pooter brilliant oh alan i've just seen your comment i would really appreciate that sir so for myself matt cheerios